So, hi everyone. Uh, yeah, my name is uh, Andrew Dobis. I'm a computer science student from Switzerland. I'm here to present Chisel Verify, a hardware verification library for Chisel. So, I worked on this project along with uh, Chark Peterson, Casper Hester, Enrico, Enrico Toroto, uh, Hans Damsgaard, and uh, Martin Scherbo uh, at the Technical University of Denmark. So, let's, uh, let's begin. Right. So, Yes, that works. Okay, I'm going to start by giving a general outline of what the presentation is going to look like. So first, I'm going to talk about the motivation behind our project. So like first, uh, hardware verification, and uh, in general, and then the current solutions that exist for verifying chisel designs. And then finally, look at the sort of uh, meat of our project, which uh, of the presentation, which is our our solution for verifying chisel designs entirely in Scala. So this is separated into four topics: functional coverage constrained random verification, bus functional models, and time assertions. So let's begin by talking about hardware verification. So verifying a design means uh, guaranteeing that the expected features as described in the specification have been correctly implemented and have the correct behavior. So this definition can sort of be separated into two main methods, verification, which is testing before uh, taping out, and validation, which is testing after taping out. We're going to focus on verification. So why would we need verification? Well, the idea is to try to guarantee that our design works and uh, it has the correct behavior before spending a lot of money uh, taping it out. So to do that, it'd be, it's very important to have efficient tools that can allow us to minimize the amount of time we spend on the verification cycle. So let's talk about the current uh, tools that allow us to verify a chisel design. So to do this directly in Scala, we can uh, use the two main tools. Well, there's actually one, one main tool and uh, an additional tool that can be added to it. So chisel test, which allows us to write more traditional test benches where we can set um, our inputs and compare outputs to a golden model. It's nice about chisel test that adds functionality such as like, uh, forking that allow, for, uh, that allow us to write more parallel tests and allow us to write uh, more accurate golden models. And then we have Scala test, which is purely a software testing framework, but it has neat coverage fun uh, functionalities that can be added, uh, that can be used in conjunction to chisel test, and which would allow us to write more, uh, to well, have coverage for our tests. But this is purely software, so we can't really write full test benches with it. Uh, then we can also test the output Verilog from a uh, chisel description. And this is, uh, well, personally, what I usually did up, up until this project. Uh, so this can be done uh, using System Verilog, which is a non-synthesizable object-oriented extension to uh, Verilog, and UVM, which is a verification methodology that allows us to write uh, sort of reusable test benches. Now, what are the sort of fallbacks to using these different methods? Well, chisel test is great for writing test benches, but there aren't really many functionalities in it that allow us to uh, verify the correctness of a test. Uh, then Scala test, as I said before, purely software testing framework, so it doesn't really apply. It doesn't really help us here. Uh, and then System Verilog and UVM, they do have these, what I'm going to call verification functionalities. Uh, however, it's very verbose in writing a UVM test bench for a very uh, simple, uh, uh, for a simple uh, DUT requires roughly 800 lines of code compared to sort of the average uh, 80 for a chisel test test bench. So it can be quite verbose. However, UVM test benches can be reused, which is a nice feature. And also it requires us to use multiple languages to test a chisel design, which is something that should be avoidable. Uh, so that brings us to our solution, Chisel Verify. Uh, so Chisel Verify is actually uh, built as an extension to chisel test. Uh, it brings uh, functionalities such as functional coverage, constraint random verification, bus functional models, and time assertions uh, to the Chisel ecosystem, all of this entirely in Scala. So let's go into detail into each one of these um, sort of topics. So let's start with functional coverage. So the idea behind, so, so first we have two main ways to look at coverage. We have the sort of quantitative approach, so checking how much code have we tested. And then we have more of a qualitative approach, which is what functional coverage is. So which features have we actually tested? And 
Um, so a way, uh, way to do this is by defining what's called a verification plan. So this verification plan is supposed to represent our DUT's functionalities. It's sort of like an in-test version of our specification. So a verification plan is comprised of cover groups, which are each comprised of cover points, which each contain bins. And the coverage percentage is actually uh, computed using the amount of hits that a bin gets. So in our uh, framework, we have four different main types of cover points. We have the regular, what we call the regular cover points, which is sort of the equivalent to what System Verilog calls a cover point. So the, these contain bins that are defined by ranges, and a hit is considered when a value uh, is sampled within that range. So each cover point is associated, of course, to a port. Um, now, then we have cover conditions, which are sort of different way to look at it. We have uh, an arbitrary number of ports that can be associated to a user-defined predicate, and a hit is considered when this uh, predicate is satisfied, uh, given a, a set of sampled points. And so uh, this is only possible thanks to the sort of functional nature of Scala. So stuff like this is a lot harder to do in system Verilog. Uh, then we have uh, cross points, which is the same as the cross uh, relation we have in system Verilog. Now this allows to define um, to define a coverage relation between multiple different ports inside of a yeah, multiple different ports uh, from a DUT. And so we have a list of ranges each with where each range is associated to a port and a hit is considered when each of the ranges gets uh, like a singular hit. And then we have time cross, which is the same idea, but with an added timing delay. So this allows us to check, check this, the, um, test the timing of our, of our DUT. Uh, so how do we do this? Uh, the idea is we have a coverage database that manages, uh, that just uh, contains sort of bin to hit value mappings along with the cycle, which allows us to gather this timing information. And then we have what's called a coverage reporter, which sort of interfaces, which sort of uh, glues everything together. It accesses the DUT and it defines the, it helps us define the verification plan. And then samples the port and manages the coverage database. So the coverage reporter is what will be used to create our ver verification plan. So this is side with a bunch of code. It's just the, the, the idea is uh, how to use it. We have we can use our point type and then give its name and a set of ports, and then bins or conditions, depending on what we're trying to do. So here's an example of how we would define a coverage report, uh, sorry, verification plan. So first we create our coverage reporter and then we register our verification plan using the register method. And here, for example, we're just creating a set of regular cover points, each having a couple of bins and a cross point at the end. And then throughout our test, every time we we have a, we have a, our, our outputs that are associated to cover points have an updated value, we have to sample them using the sample method. And then finally, we can generate our report either by calling the report method and then using the values, or we can just print out the reports, which would give something like this, where we have the, the points type followed by its name, and then ranges followed by the number of hits, followed by the coverage percentage. So now that was functional coverage, now let's move on to constraint random verification. So the idea behind constraint random verification is uh, rather than manually sending the inputs, we can sort of automate the process by defining a what, what's called random objects, which then contain random variables and constraints. And then the inputs would be set using sort of constraint-driven ran random values. So rather than using uniform randomness, we can sort of have driven randomness. So what we did is we added a constraint programming language to Scala, so a way to define these constraints. So we can define our random objects and random variables and our constraints. And a random object then defines a constraint satisfaction problem, which is then solved using the Jacob uh, CSP solver, which is a, a pre-existing Java uh, CSP solver. Uh, so this is uh, just a quick overview of how it's done in System Verilog. Uh, so the idea is we defined a, a class that contains rand or rand c uh, variables. So the difference between rand and rand c is that rand c is cyclic, meaning that it can't take the same value twice, and rand is just can take any value uh, within its uh, within the its bit width. And um, 
then constraints are defined using a constraint block. So the way we did this in Scala is we have to define a class that uh, extends our rand object trait. And uh, then random fields are defined as either rand or rand C uh, values within this class, and they can be associated to constraints, either single constraints or constraint groups, which are the same as the constraint block we have in system very long. Uh, the, here's the list of operators that sort of that can be used uh, in our constraint programming language. Then we can also have conditional constraints, which are defined using either ifcon or lc. As the name implies, it's a constraint that's only applied if, can, uh, if a condition is met. And uh, finally, uh, this is something we added to um, sort of spice things up. We have the dist operator that's uh, where we can define our own custom distribution distributions by as associating weights to value ranges. So this is personally what I use the most to define uh, to define uh, the random variables. And then once we've defined our random objects, we can we have to randomize it using randomized fields. Every time we call this method, uh, it will um, we'll solve the constraints if they are solvable, which is why it's always important to check that the, uh, the problem we defined was solvable. Um, and so here's a quick example of how to use it. I don't think we'll go over, I'll go over this in detail. The idea is just we create our random object with the random var uh, values and then, uh, then define our constraints afterwards. And then we instantiate this random object, randomize it whenever we need it, and we can get the values by calling the value method of our random variables. So that was con our constraint programming language. And now we're moving on to bus functional models. So the idea behind this is to create an in a sort of abstraction to simplify uh, an interface, a, a sort of standardized interface. So we did this with the AXI4 uh, interface. So the, the idea here was we, rather than working with every single individual wire, we work using transactions. For example, for AXI4, you have three right channels and two read channels, each of them with their own ready valid interface, meaning that you end up with 25 signals to handle for a write and 20 signals to handle for a read, which is a lot. So rather than doing that, to simplify uh, sort of our tests, we can just use transactions. So a read transaction, a write transaction. And um, yeah, so it does, so that handles all of the inner workings within that transaction. So all we have to care about is I want to read something and I want to write something and then it just works. So this is what it looks like. So we don't have to individually set every 25 signals uh, for writes and all the 20 signals for read. All we have to do is create our transaction and then wait for a response. That's pretty much it. Uh, so this, it's very customizable. We have all of these uh, different uh, sort of uh, options we can use, but we can also just write uh, as we did here where we have our uh, write transaction, which takes an address, a value and the size. So uh, that was bus function models. Let's talk about our last topic, timed assertions. So this is, um, it's more about, um, so here the idea is to create uh, sort of predicated assertions that take into account timing delays. So rather than having to manually assert something, then uh, step a couple cycles, then assert again, then compare the two values, we have we can just uh, have we have to the delay types, which define different ways to consider a delay. And then, for example, we can uh, give in a sort of number of cycles. We can have, for example, exactly delay, which uh, checks if our assertion is true in exactly x cycles. Or we can have an eventually delay, which checks if our assertion is true at least once during the next X cycles. Then we have uh, other different types of delays. Um, and so the idea here is uh, we, to, to use either chisel test expect for the assertion or a software, a regular software assertion to sort of check these uh, predicates. Uh, so here's what it looks like if we if we do, if we try to do the same uh, sort of assertion using either expect or assert, or assert, but this time with the added timing delay. So uh, here we're just trying to check if, for example, a, a value is one at some point in, for example, x cycles, or at some point in the next eleven cycles. And so as you can see, very light in text, not too hard to use. Uh, but then again, the difference between accept and assert, that's just syntactic sugar. We can use either. Either one of them doesn't really change anything. So that was uh, timed assertions. Now let's just conclude. 
so the idea behind Chisel Verify was to bring sort of verification to Chisel entirely in Scala so that we no longer have to work with many different languages to verify design. So uh, now, as you could, might have seen during the presentation, the syntax is a lot lighter than using System Verilog with UVM. And it can also, this uh, framework could also be used if you wanted to, to verify other types of designs that are, are described with, uh, without Chisel using Chisel black boxes. But the main goal here is to allow Chisel designs to be tested entirely in Scala without having to move back and forth between different languages, different environments, and all that stuff. And to do it in a sort of efficient and lightweight way. Uh, so here are a couple of references uh, of like the main reading material we had for this. And uh, our project is completely open source, so you can follow, you can go check it out on GitHub. And there's a nice wiki that sort of details how to how to use it, how to get started. And it's published on Maven, so all you have to do is add this single line to your built.sbt file to start using it. And so, yeah, thanks very much. Thank you very much for listening. And uh, are there any questions?